title of his talk is Impact of Low-Dose Naltrexone on Bladder Dysfunction and Multiple Sclerosis. He says, I am sorry to be unable to attend this year for what I am sure will be a very enjoyable and important conference. My own involvement with LDN is fairly recent, but I am more convinced than ever that we have an extremely important drug on our hands, which can help a wide range of conditions and literally millions of people worldwide. My own research into LDN has reached a very exciting stage, and although I am unable to attend this week for personal reasons, I hope to be invited back and report our findings firsthand. We propose a two-center trial in Scotland to assess the impact of low-dose naltrexone on the symptoms of bladder dysfunction and MS. I have prescribed LDN to over 150 patients in the past three years and have been convinced of its efficacy in this condition. The mode of action of LDN is not well understood, but one hypothesis is that it influences the nitric oxide cycle through inhibition of the enzyme-inducible nitric oxide synthetase. Animal studies indicate that bladder dysfunction may be related to increased nitric oxide production and is therefore a useful symptom to monitor. Urinary frequency is relatively easy to measure and improvements with LDN treatment are often significant, making this a good measurable outcome. The statistician to the study has calculated that 120 patients will be required to give sufficient power to show statistical significance for the study and we aim to recruit these patients from two centers in Glasgow and Dundee with the study lasting four months in total. Designing the study was relatively easy. The difficult part is getting the funding and support to carry it out. The total cost of the study will be around 50,000 pounds and the LDN Research Trust. Linda Elskut, where are you? Linda, Linda please stand up. Linda, Linda flew for how many hours, Linda, to get here today? 26 hours, oh boy. All the way from over there, thanks Linda. Linda uh, and the LDN Research Trust. <laughs> A few years ago, you probably couldn't have walked the 100 yards, Linda. <laughs> this time you came across the pond. Uh, LDN, thanks. Uh, the LDN Research Trust is prepared to support approximately 20% of these costs. We are applying to the Chief Scientist's Office, that's in caps, in Scotland for government funding for the rest of the study and early discussions have been very positive. Despite having the highest rate of MS in the world, Scotland has not produced much in the way of research, so our application will apparently be welcomed. It would be useful to look at some indicators of the mode of action of LDN during the study as secondary outcome measures. We may also apply for funding to monitor inflammatory markers such as tumor necrosis factor alpha, inflammatory cytokine levels, and nitric oxide activity. The time scale for the research is determined to a large extent by the funders, and the next meeting of the CSO, that Chief Scientist Office, is in January. If successful, we could look to start recruiting in spring of next year with completion in late summer 2008. It could be nicely time for next year's LDN conference where I hope to be able to attend in person and update on the progress on this trial and associated matters. In my practice, we use LDN as part of an overall nutritional medicine strategy which includes vitamin D estimation and omega-3 testing. We have developed our own multinutrient baseline, AMPM, which is designed to prevent any nutritional deficiencies and contains many of the recommended vitamins and minerals in the best bet diet. We are opening our own lab in Strathclyde University in Glasgow in the next few months and will specialize in omega blood testing for patients with MS, chronic fatigue syndrome, and a variety of other conditions where LDN has been found to be effective, including cancer and autism. We hope to develop an effective strategy for the management of a range of conditions based on nutritional assessment and including LDN where appropriate. He says, research is fundamental to convincing our medical colleagues of the potential usefulness of LDN. Our efforts in this arena will be a challenge, but we aim to show that LDN is a useful and effective drug within an integrated nutritional approach to medicine. I hope and trust that this conference will expand our horizons for the treatment of MS and other conditions, and that we can be involved in the exciting future that awaits. And that's from Dr. Tom Gilhooley. We thank him very much for that.